Hello everyone, welcome back to Blood Omen. Last time we have made our way through Termagant Forest to the Wardor's Mansion, and now it is about time we find the enigmatic vampire himself. That this vulgar display of fortune remained undisturbed was a testament of fear's dominion over greed. Their charms were almost visible through the gauze of their clothing, yet beauty such as theirs delivered only death. For these were Voridor's pets, nothing more than beasts, slave to his will and the easy prey he provided. Vampires, all of them, held in thrall by one stronger still. This is one of the things in his mansion that speaks quite a bit about what Vorador is. He keeps other vampires as slaves. Brides, but they're de facto slaves. Slaves. The darkness was soothing, and in the distance, sharp and sweet, came the scent of spilt blood. And this is telling quite a bit about Cain, the way he, he, he is coming to embrace his vampirism. If you don't remember, in the beginning of the game he considers it nothing but a curse, and looks for a cure. Now, speaking of the mansion, a lot of the time that we spend here, we actually spend not progressing through the level, but instead finding secrets. Because there are a lot of them here. In fact, I'm pretty sure that this is the second richest area in the game in terms of secrets. <laughs> And a lot of them are quite boring, so they will be sped up. And unfortunately you can't get stuck in enemies and environment. And the only way out of this is by killing everything in your path. The Affle Flame Sword. Hey, Victor! <laughs> <laughs> Most of the secrets in Wardor's Mansion, in fact, maybe all of them are centered around either mind-controlling people or finding switches behind curtains and then backtracking to find the door that was opened by the switch behind the curtain. What is this? Why are there so many people here? Vorador's pantry. A vampire's feast. Like cattle awaiting slaughter, men and women dangled from the rusted hooks upon the dungeon walls. Blood and viscera frosted the dirt and stone. The abundance nearly overwhelmed me. For blood is the life. Okay, so vampires are his pets 
and humans are his snacks. My enemies are quite vicious, and the Chaos Armor extracts from them a heavy price for their bloodlust. The blows are meant for me, but it is their bodies that carry the wounds. Chaos Armor is useful, but I'm pretty sure that I forget to use it for quite a while. Still, in any event... Uh... There will be Vorador's characterization done by himself when, he, when we meet him, finally. But, to be honest, all the clues, they are already here in the mansion. He has a lot of pets, he had a lot of snacks, human snacks. Well, it is one of the themes of the game that evil is relative. Although it should be noted that in the future games, in the future games of the series, it will this characterization of Borador it will be significantly downplayed, especially in Blood Omen 2. But here he is essentially the a god am I kind of person. Now notice how the floor here is checkered. Well, one of the deleted scenes from Blood Omen was originally supposed to be the way we encounter Vorador, the way we get to him. It was supposed to be done through a chess match with people used as pawns. And uh, according to what's written in the uh, Silicon Knights uh, official frequent asked questions to Blood Omen, the way to win that game of chess was supposed to be a classic mate. I'm not sure what they mean by that, because there are more than one typical mates. But, it in the end it didn't work by the time of the final release should have come, so it was eventually cut out. And to be honest with you, I think that it's for the better. Even though it would have given us another clue about uh, characterization of Vorador, because he would consider humans his pawns too. Not just snacks, but also pawns. You will sometimes see me get stuck here for a second. Uh, this is because I am looking at a guide as I play through this, because I don't want to miss secrets. Although, in the end, I do miss secrets, so it all turns out to be in vain. This is a fun spell. Oh, to bathe in the blood of others. This spell is especially useful in the face of multiple combatants. Beware those with tainted blood. Kane kinda said that, uh, though it kinda sounded as if those who have tainted blood should be beware, but in reality it means that we should be beware of those who have tainted blood. The room I had entered had but one purpose the torture and execution of human beings for the sadistic pleasure of its engineer. Blood was splattered on every surface, coating the spikes that jutted from the walls and filming the stone floor. The dread and agony of victims past still echoed through the lethal walls. A symphony of terror and agony filled the air. Then, from amidst the cacophony of screaming souls came the perverse laughter of the vampire himself. And upon the wall, scribbled in blood, were the words Manus Seller Die. Manus Seller Dei. The swift hand of God. This is what the prisoners themselves view Vorador, and all vampires, I guess. Yeah, this doesn't this is pretty grim for here grim for humans. Again, evil is relative. Which is something you may or may not agree with, but this is the idea that the game uh, sometimes shoves down your throat. Although usually it's fairly subtle, so credits to Silicon Knights on that.
And this is a secret which I failed to unlock. I'm not sure why. Because the guide says that there should have. Oh, I forget this switch, of course. Of course. There's a different secret that I also missed, which is also a door to the north of the uh, central room. Of a different central room. It'll come a bit later. Um, this is not mandatory, this is optional. And this is very slow, and I will speed this, speed this up. I don't even need most of this stuff anyway, but I collect it because I hoard things. Amongst Vorador's possessions, I found an ancient chronicle. Long ago, vampires grew in such number so as to capture the attention of the circle. The Order of the Saraphan, or the Angels of Light, as they were called, was instated to counter the menace. Thus, the Vampire Purge began. Energy bolts repair in in and this Stella with this book gives us some insight on the Seraphon Order and talks about some vampire purge whatever that is <sighs> this will be another secret and a secret that also gives some insight on uh, the backstory of the game well, of the series really although the developers originally didn't think that would be about the series and what exactly were they drawing? I mean, these drawings. The tapestries wove a tale of chaos ignited, an orgy of fire and pain. Undead beings with rotted skins caked with sulfur and ash beckoned at me through a burning abyss. Their tortured stares were a testimonial to the price of weakness. Their fate would not find me, yet blood calls to blood. These paintings seem to be paintings of the Elder Wars, or the wars with a spoiler species, um, that are one of the primary engines of the events that unfold throughout the entire series. Although funnily enough, we don't learn about them until uh, very late, until Blood Omen 2, and we don't get any clues about it until very late Soul River 2. And this is the door to the north that I was thinking about. This one is supposed to be open, but I forgot to do something apparently, and it's closed. And thus I miss a secret, unfortunately. And now we are about to meet the vampire himself. In the bowels of that black forest I found something worse than hell. A vision of what I was becoming. It's not often I see one of our own. Especially one as young and foolish as yourself. Nonetheless, drink. Drink deep and indulge your gift. Gift? <laughs> Vorador thought my curse a blessing. That we were gods. That mortals offered their blood as sacrifice so that we could enjoy our supernatural powers. And somewhere, deep inside my new self, I knew that he was right. That mortal dreams were prayers. Prayers to us, begging us for power. 
I pondered this as the decadent old fool prattled on about his past. A boorish account of how he defeated Malek of the Seraphim and took his vengeance upon the Circle of Nine for supporting the Seraphim Holy War to exterminate us. Feast on your corpses! After slaughtering six of the sheep, I defeated their pathetic little shepherd, Mac. Since then, our kind has not bothered with the cattle, except to feed. And I suggest you do the same. Meddling with the affairs of man can do us no good. Seraphan witch hunts are much too tedious to concern ourselves with. Am I understood, Cain? Good. Take this ring. If you ever need assistance, it will summon you. Despite your youthful arrogance, you amuse me, Kay. It is such a pity to lose you to the abyss. Now be gone! My visit with Boyder only strengthened my resolve. His power uncontested by mortals, he had fallen to another enemy. Decadence has claimed itself many a great warrior. So, I hope that you noticed during the cutscene the mural of a woman uh, on the wall behind Vorador. So, meaning that there is... Uh, this mural, this painting, will come again, come up again in Defiance when we revisit the uh, mansion. So there is still something human in him, I guess, but... Uh, let's just say that everything he said, he means it. He very much means it. In this game, Vorador is kind of an XP for the uh, for Kane's struggle between his vampirism and his desire to remain at least somewhat human. And this is an annoying part, and a completely unnecessary part, so I will speed this up without any regret. Right now, we are making our way out of the <coughs> mansion. And of course, what better way to do this than through a tomb?
It's kind of funny that I forget to wear, to equip the KS armor even though it is exactly what we are going to be wearing throughout the, uh, the remainder of the game. At this point we're about halfway through the game, but gear-wise wise, we are in the end game. We are very much in the end game. Which is kind of funny and a bit unbalanced uh, if you think about it. And so I left that place, with clear knowledge of what sort of monster I would become if I let my curse consume me, and with an ally for the future. Yeah, as I said, this here was an exposition for Kane struggling with what he still considers, well, what he still considers his curse. Control, flame the axes. Vorador has fully embraced what he is, even though he too was human back when. A triad congregates at the roof of the world, Cain. A plot to twist the land to shape the world. North is where your vengeance lies. That is the next target to progress the story, but we're not going to go there next time. To find out where we do go, You'll have to watch the next part. Goodbye.